All righty. Welcome back. This is Anthony Patch and the Anthony Patch Show. Kev Baker's my co-pilot today, as I said at the opening, and uh, we're talking about the temple here, but just wanted to mention again about uh, my premise that if there are UFOs being seen, if there have been physical crafts that have been observed and materials recovered from a crash, be it Roswell, whatever, My take on it is if there are technologies being built on this side, like the quantum computers that I'm going to launch into here in a moment in its relevancy to the temple, Herod's temple, then would it not be reasonable to assume or to expect that these technologies that we are seeing that I call evidence of evil, such as AI, quantum computing, DNA modification, transhumanism, uploading our consciousness into a computer, robotics that are displacing people. I consider that evidence of evil. Would it not be reasonable to then assume and expect that those same technologies pre-exist on the other side. I'm talking about the spiritual side. I contend that they must. We've laid out in many shows the process of communication, whether you're talking geomancy or quantum computers, whether you're talking about spiritual rituals, Whatever form or device or methodology of communication, it is communication with the other side. You can't separate the spiritual from the physical. The spiritual is here. But if you're communicating with fallen angels, if you're communicating with evil deities, then the information in that communication process that is derived results in the technologies that I would consider to be evil technologies that are not beneficial to mankind that are detrimental, that are an existential threat to mankind, to God's creation, as well as the planet, which is also God's creation, then those people on the other side, if you want to call them people, those entities must have that same information that they're giving to us, must have those same technologies that they're passing on to us to build, And therefore, if you have to talk about UFOs, which is not a subject that I tend to delve into at all, then I would say that what we are seeing physically here manifesting already exists interdimensionally, that these are interdimensional craft that were built and constructed and have made their way through a dimensional barrier, call it a portal, if you will, into our reality, but in limited numbers. So let's go to the most infamous portal that you know is related to me, and that is the one that they're trying to open at CERN. And what I have described for many years now as the freeway, given its size, its duration of opening, and what will come through. You go to look at Revelation 12, you'll see what comes through. The locust army and the demons, and I believe also the Nephilim. I mean, basically all the things that are of your worst nightmares and beyond will come through. What we're seeing now is sort of a bleeding through. Small portals, short duration, allowing certain craft to come through. But these are the technologies that already exist on the other side that they want built here to enhance that communication, to begin the process of building the infrastructure. You've heard Donald Trump, President Trump, talk about in the United States of the spending of trillions of dollars in rebuilding the infrastructure and building out the infrastructure, including 5G here in this country. So what I offer to you to consider is that the infrastructure for Satan, for Lucifer and his minions, his demons, his creatures, are that infrastructure system is being built here. 
that mirrors what exists on the other side. So I just offer that for consideration. As I've done with the Entangled magazine, I offer you information for you to first be aware of that maybe you've not seen or been exposed to, and then to do your own research, to do your own critical analysis, to do your own critical thinking. That's all I offer when I present the information. And when you see the January issue of Entangled, where I'm dedicating the issue to the temple and the quantum chip and the flow of information and the geometry that results from the flow of that information and why geometry figures so heavily into AI, its operating systems, and how AI increases its IQ, so to speak, is what we presented in our last two webinars with Kathleen Urquhart and myself, and what we are presenting in this issue dedicated to the temple and the quantum chip. If you go to anthonypatch.com right now, on my homepage, you will see a short video clip, but it has a thumbnail of Herod's temple with the quantum chip positioned at the Holy of Holies. And that's my specific point here, folks. The Holy of Holies in the temple itself is a communication doorway, a portal. Now, in the sense of communing with God, it is the Holy of Holies for the communicating with God. But if you look at the blueprint, literally the blueprint of Herod's temple, and this is similar with Solomon's temple, it is similar even with broken Greek and Roman temples, pardon me. The temples are arranged in a specific fashion so as to enhance the communication either in the case of the Greeks and the Romans with, you know, their deities, their little G gods, or in the case of communing with God the Creator, who I as a Christian consider to be the only God that there is. If the Holy of Holies is placed within the temple in an exclusion zone that is ex excluded from the exterior, and I want you to focus on that, the exclusion. It is an area of isolation. The Holy of Holies is behind six cubit thick walls. A cubit is 1.7 feet. Okay? We're talking about six cubit walls. That's 10, 10 foot thick walls. Why would you isolate the Holy of Holies behind thick walls? Well, sure. If you have invaders, you don't want invaders being able to have easy access to your Holy of Holies. But here's one correlation I'm going to offer you that has to do with quantum physics and has to do with specifically the design of D-Wave's quantum computers. The qubits are isolated in a black cube. That cube is constructed of multiple layers of shielding material. The purpose of the shielding is to block electromagnetic waves, energy waves, microwaves, radio waves, gamma rays, even x-rays, from entering that refrigerated environment that's down at around 15 Kelvin, okay, 150 times colder than outer space. The reason it's so cold is so that they can achieve superconductivity in the materials that they're using in the chipset. And that reduces decoherence. It reduces errors. It maintains the state of quantum entanglement between qubits. Okay? But why the shielding around it also is to maintain that coherence, to eliminate as much as possible any er interference from the outside. That is exactly the same scenario that you find with the construction of the 1.7 qubit walls. One, one qubit is 1.7 feet. It's six qubits. It's 10 feet thick, each wall. I offered to you as a design intended to shield the Holy of Holies from the outside.
from the influences, as well as for security purposes. But let's get a little bit bigger on our example. If you're at anthonypatch.com and you look at my homepage, you can see what I'm seeing. Herod's Temple and the chipset. In the magazine, we do a series of overlays that Kev produced for me, of photographs that we explained extensively in the webinars and we are presenting in the magazine. If you look at the wire connections that extend out from the chipset and you look at the direction in which those wires are laid out and you look at the connecting points, all of those things around the perimeter, which in the case of the temple itself are the outside perimeter walls with the area of the Gentiles inside, looks exactly the same as how D-Wave designed the architecture for their chipset. Within the Holy of Holies of the temple is where the communication takes place. Within, if you want, the Holy of Holies in the center of the chipset of D-Wave's quantum chips are the qubits, the quantum bits, which is where the communication takes place in their description, in Gordy Rose's words, parallel dimensions. Now, Kathleen and I have changed that parallel dimensions. We're redefining that as walls, walls that have mirrors. Okay? These are not parallel dimensions. What they're seeing are reflections. Now, Kev, I'm going to let you jump in here, but about a week ago, NASA claimed that they had observed another solar system that they claim is nearly identical to our own. <clears throat> what I'm going to suggest to you is that, that solar system is a reflection of our own. It, this literally is smoke and mirrors. Go ahead. And I heard you covering that with our good friend Clay Lewis, and it really blew me away. And Microcosm in the chat, he's looking at the images I've been posting, and He's having or she's having a very similar experience to what I did when Anthony asked me to do this for the presentation, because I can assure you people out there, aside from having to rotate the chip around so that it was at the same perspective as the temple, this took no work whatsoever to overlay these. I had to do no photoshoppery. You can see the two separate images and then them overlaid in a progressive series. And it is nearly identical. And at the time, Anthony, I was sharing with you how profound I found this. And microcosm in the chat room, this is huge. Discovery of a lifetime kind of stuff. And that's exactly how I felt when I was overlaying them. Because I couldn't believe that people hadn't seen this before. However, we've been dealing with people who maybe haven't had the same kind of knowledge on the D-Wave and the quantum computing as you do, sir. And that, that's not to belittle anyone else or to big you up. It's just you made this connection yourself and Kathleen. And this overlay is profound. It truly is. It's nearly identical. In fact, when you line up the wiring and things around the outside of the temple, it was scary how it went together so easily. <laughs> and Tony, I mean, this is just a thought I was having there when you were talking about all of this, but... Isn't it kind of interesting how that ancient measurement, the qubit, C-U-B-I-T, is very, very similar to the qubit, the quantum bit that we're dealing with in these communications? I mean, I find that startling. <laughs> I really do. It is funny. Yeah, it's, I call it God's sense of humor. Even if it is Satan playing with words, through guys like Gordy Rose and Eric Ladozinski when they designed this chipset and they came up with, you know, quantum bits, well, let's shorten it to qubits. You know, they're all operating under God's plan and God has a great sense of humor. So I think he gave that to them as sort of his tongue in cheek, his sort of tip of the hat. Okay, guys, if you want to have something, here's something you can, you can run with and you can have a little fun with, but it all comes from God. And, you know, these insights, <clears throat> I'm not going to take full credit for this. This comes from Kathleen. She is totally tied in with the Lord. And she shared this with me. She said, do you see the resemblance? Do you see the similarities here? 
And I, I was shocked too. I said, yes, yes, I do see it. And then I said, do you realize what's in the Holy of Holies? And she said, no, I just, I'm looking at the blueprint. It just, you know, the pattern, the layout, they look identical to the cubits. And I said, well, that's only half of it. The other half of it is the Holy of Holies is where the cubits are located. That's where the communication takes place. And that's when it all just came together. And we've just been on a tear for the last week with more research into this, into looking at the different temple designs and the other components of the temple as they relate to quantum chipset designs. And one portion of Herod's temple, which, by the way, is actually a Roman fortress. It was the Antonia. This is a Roman fortress originally. This is called the Antonia Herod's Temple Mount. And it literally is built as a fortress. And one area of it has four towers in each corner. And in the center of this, and again, this is in Entangled Magazine, this new picture that we dug up. This corner arrangement of four towers, which in and itself is considered a tower by itself. Now, Kev, you know, we have PCs that we call towers, but that's not, that's not the big epiphany. The picture that I have in my article called Counterfeit Temple in the January issue of Entangled Magazine, this tower, its layout, its architecture is identical, identical to the layout of one of the prototype D-Wave chipsets. It was a 16-qubit chipset called Europa, also known as Orion. And you look at it in the magazine, and you look at the layout for the chipset and this tower, the set of four towers as culminating as one, is exactly the same as the Europa chipset. Now, I've laid out several other iterations of the chipsets from D-Wave. And many of these chipset names I've not even released in previous shows, Kev. But I give you all of the um, sort of the, the growth of chips, of qubits, the growth chart as it begins in 2002 and extends all the way up to 2018. And it gives you the various models of D-Wave chipsets. And what I've done is I've identified not only the names and number of qubits, but I've identified the relationship of the architecture of the chipset to the components of Herod's and Solomon's temples. Now I'm going to read uh, some of these names. They call these masks because when you're doing chipset lithography, which is what D-Wave does, they use lithography for printing of chipsets in the same way that transistor silicon chips use lithography for printed circuit boards. The masks that they used, and it's interesting that they call it a mask in the first place because that portends that you're hiding something, that you're obfuscating. I understand technologically why they call it a mask because you're using chemicals as an etchant and you're leaving behind the printed circuits. I understand all that, okay? What I'm getting at here is the names, the terminology like tower and mass. You have to look at the origins of these names. So now, let's just listen to these names, Kev. These are chipsets, many of which I don't think you've ever heard before. Vesuvius, Shasta, Rainier. Now, you've heard those. Those are all volcanoes. Those are the later model chips, like up to 512. But when you talk about Mount Shasta, I mean, that's considered mm -hmm. to be, by the Native Americans, as a natural stargate. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And there are caves in Mount Shasta that are um, off limits to the public. And even the Native Americans, only those specified shaman trained people that are authorized are allowed to go into those caves. <clears throat> and then there's a lot more we can say about that. But it's interesting that they've used in some of these names volcanoes. 
Vesuvius, Shasta, and Rainier. Now we go on to Quora, Pushkin, Oberon, Nascimento, Metis, Leda, Kaliki, Lapitus, Hyperion, Ganymede, Phobos 2, and Phobos 1, Europa 2, and Orion. So you can find all that at anthonypatch.com through my Entangled Magazine January issue that's coming out. We lay all this out. I show you. Wait a minute, Tony. Yeah. They, they named ahead. after Phobos. The Phobos. Moon, yeah, the moon around Mars that Buzz Aldrin pointed out the fact has a giant monolith on it. Oh, yeah. And they've got one that's called Kaliki. It's very mm-hmm. reminiscent of Kali, the partner of Shiva. What is going on here? Mm-hmm. And Europa and Orion, these are moons. Okay, Ganymede is a moon. Yeah. If you just want to take these, I'll send this to you, Kev. I'll send you. The, in fact, I think I sent you the article. Um, it's the Counterfeit Temple article. I sent it to you in Word. It's <laughs> it's worth the whole show of itself. If we just take all of these names and look at the historical significance and the symbolism as well as the mythology behind them and the godheads. So. Moving on through this this issue of January, we again I show you, for example, the relationship of geomancy and its sixteen figures, sixteen figures of geomancy that equate to the sixteen models of D wave computers. But more specifically, I'm showing you how the in total the sixteen figures side by side with the 512 Vesuvius chipset from D-Wave that came out in 2013 are identical. What I show you is the wiring diagram of the qubits alongside the geomantic figures, 16 of which comprise geomancy, and of which those 16, their combinations, their iterations, their maximum number of configurations results in 65,536 iterations of 16 geomantic figures. It is exactly the same number as the 10th model, D-Wave, comprised of 65,536 qubits. It's based on base 2 multiplication. It's very simple. It's a binary system of increasing the number of qubits on the chipsets that results in that figure. But it is also the binary system that is derived from geomancy. When I say that this is evidence of evil, this is what I'm showing you, folks. Geomancy is used for divining the future. And that's all in an Entangled magazine. Okay, We spent the October and December issue talking about populists and talking about geomancy. we break it all down. I won't go through all that here today. But what I am saying is in this article, Counterfeit Temple, I show you various chipsets that relate to things like, how about D-Wave system, the D-Wave 2X that came out in 2015, the fourth model based on the 1024 chipset Side by side, it's exactly the same as Aleister Crowley's great table in which he has a chart bisected by a cross into four quadrants. The chipset is laid out identically to Crowley's great table, which was used for communicating with the other side, the exchange of information. You go to the Washington chipset, which is 1,152 cubits. Okay? It's identical to Crowley's great table. I just show you the evidence. It's laid out here. It's very simple. So you go to the 2000Q, the one that was just sold to Toyota, Volkswagen, Temporal Defense Systems, and all of the pre-existing customers, which was Google, Facebook, Amazon, Lockheed Martin, USC, okay, NSA, how can I forget about the NSA, our good buddies out there, they all have upgrades 
to the 2000Q system. And the 2000Q, as Kevin and I broke three weeks ago, the news that even the 2000Q since January has been upgraded. They now have what is called a reverse annealing process. It's a recursive reverse annealing process. It enables tools that combine the best classical performance with the best quantum processing units performance to achieve a synergistic solution. This is what I write in my article. I'm quoting myself. Now, we've talked about quantum processing units surpassing the graphical processing units that are used in games, in computer games. Computer games were for teaching AI. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 